There is nobody who's alive right now on this planet who actually understands John 3.16, including myself. Because Romans 3.11 says nobody understands. Only God has understanding. This is why the Bible says we have to lean on God's understanding, not our own. But today I'm going to give you the most in-depth analysis, word by word, into what this verse actually means. Because the entire story of the Bible is written right here in this verse, but most people don't know that. And the first word we see is for, and that is to say because. So because. God. A lot of people ask questions about why God does things and people have terrible answers because they don't go straight back to God. But here we see the first cause for anything is God because God so love. Notice the word so. It means so much, so much love. It's not just a little bit. It's a lot. Okay. Another thing you have to remember is that God is eternal. So this love that he had for the world existed before the world even began. People think that Jesus dying on the cross was an afterthought for God. Like God created humans humans and then God was like, oh no, they messed up. Now I have to save them. That's not what he did. God knew everyone would mess up. That's the whole point. This is why in other places in the Bible, it says that the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. Jesus already died on the cross before the world began. Obviously, physically it didn't happen, but in spirit it did because God is spirit and everything he thinks, his thoughts, his plans, everything happens in spirit. So that is key to understanding this verse, but let's move on. Because God so loved the world that he that he, well, who is he? This is where things get a little bit tricky because there's actually multiple people within one God. So we have to specify who is sending who here. The he refers to the father, God, the father. And just a side note, the Bible says that God is love. And by definition, love is selfless. Therefore, if God is truly selfless, he has to be more than one person. Because if God existed before the world began and he was only one person, that means he couldn't love anyone. Love doesn't exist yet because there's no one he can love. But since all three members of the Trinity existed before the world began, all three of them loved each other perfectly. So God the Father gave his only son, who is also God. Again, this is key to understanding here. If the son and the father switched places, the exact same thing would have happened because all three of them are God and have the exact same thoughts. So it's not that God just punished some random guy out there. No, he punished himself on the cross so that other people can walk free. But you do have to understand that God the Father did not suffer and die on the cross. God the Son did. The Son came into this world. And just think about it this way. A father's love for his child is greater than any other type of love on planet Earth. So God sent his only son and watched him suffer for several hours. He watched him get tortured and crucified at the hands of his own creation so that, this is where the good part comes, so that everyone who believes, okay, so everyone who believes, God gave his only son to suffer and die on the cross so that everyone who believes, when we look at everyone, we don't say every person who ever lived because you have to read the full verse. He says everyone who believes. So there are a ton of false Christian teachers out there who say that Jesus died for you even if you don't believe in him and you die in hell, which is simply not the case. God does all this so that everyone who believes, there is a necessary condition here. Everyone who believes in him, and him is, of course, God the Son, Jesus Christ in the flesh, will not perish. Okay, so now this is what happens to the people who don't believe in him. Let's just go to the word perish in the English language. It says to suffer death, typically in a violent, sudden, or untimely way. So this is describing the second death, the people who get thrown into the lake of fire, where not only their body dies, but their soul dies as well. And some people have even told me that the Greek word used here for the word perish doesn't actually mean die. But when you look at the Greek word here, here, it does mean to destroy fully, to die. This is based off of the lie that humans have immortal souls and our souls can't be destroyed. And of course, that is a lie straight from the serpent in the garden. You certainly will not die. In fact, when Adam and Eve sinned, they lost immortality. God banned Adam and Eve from taking the fruit of the tree of life to live forever. God did not want us to live forever in a state where we're sinful and broken. He has to heal us first. In fact, God himself says that the soul is not immortal. The soul who sins will die, not live forever in torment. He says it will die. So that's the fate of the people who don't believe. But for the people who do believe, they have eternal life. So only the people who believe in Jesus will live forever. One last point, everyone who believes in him, well, who is going to believe in him? Why is it that most people don't believe in him and reject him while some people do and they follow him to their deaths? Well, Jesus explains this in John chapter 10, where a bunch of Jews ask, 
asked Jesus, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you're the Messiah, just tell us. And Jesus responded, I told you, but you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, these testify of me. But you do not believe because, key word here is because you are not of my sheep. So the people who do not believe, do not believe because they're not God's people. They're not Jesus' sheep who are going to listen to him. Jesus further explains, my sheep listen to my voice and I know them and they follow me. Some people want to tell me that you actually become a sheep when you start listening to Jesus, but that's just false because Jesus literally said earlier in John chapter 10, I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So Jesus says that there are sheep that he has out there in the world that he has not yet reached. So there's a lot of people who are alive right now to this day who are God's lost sheep. God is finding them. So we have a promise from Jesus that his sheep will listen to his voice no matter what. This is what's so awesome. I don't have to worry about convincing people of anything. I just tell people about Jesus and then the people who are going to listen are going to listen and receive eternal life. That's what's awesome. I don't have to get into arguments and debates with a whole bunch of people who disagree with me. I don't have to force people's beliefs down their throats. I simply state the truth and they can either take it or they can leave it. Christians have to remember that they're not omnipotent. They can't force their beliefs onto someone. God is the only one who can do that. So this verse is so great because it does tell the entire story of the Bible within one sentence. We start that in the beginning, you know, God created the universe. He created the world. He loves us so much that he had this plan to give his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. That's how well, the world is going to end up. Everyone who doesn't believe is going to die. And everyone who does believe will just live forever. And that's the story of the universe. It's the story of existence. It's a story of God's love, his overflowing love within himself, within the members of the Trinity, which he gives to billions of absolutely and utterly undeserving people. They did nothing to deserve this life, much less eternal life. Anyways, I love you guys so much. See you in the next video.